Chapter 11 of the Song Celestial or Bhagavad Gita Translated by Sir Edwin Arnold This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jyoti Taravanat Chapter 11 Arjuna said, This for my soul's peace have I heard from thee the unfolding of the mystery supreme named adhyatman comprehending which my darkness is dispelled for now i know o lotus-eyed whence is the birth of men and whence their death and what the majesties of thine immortal rule fain would i see as thou thyself declarest it sovereign lord the likeness of that glory of thy form wholly revealed o thou divinest one if this can be if i may bear the sight make thyself visible lord of all prayers show me thy very self the eternal god krishna said gaze then thou son of pritha i manifest for thee those hundred thousand thousand shapes that clothe my mystery i show thee all my semblances infinite rich divine my changeful hues my countless forms see in this face of mine adityas vasus rudras aswins and maruts see wonders unnumbered indian prince revealed to none save thee behold this is the universe look what is live and dead i gather all in one in me gaze as thy lips have said on god eternal very god see me see what thou prayest thou canst not nor with human eyes arjuna ever mayest therefore i give thee sense divine have other eyes new light and look this is my glory unveiled to mortal sight sanjaya said then o king the god so saying stood to pritha's son displaying all the splendor wonder dread of his vast almighty head out of countless eyes beholding out of countless mouths commanding countless mystic forms enfolding in one form supremely standing countless radiant glories wearing countless heavenly weapons bearing crowned with garlands of star clusters robed in garb of woven lustrous breathing from his perfect presence breaths of every subtle essence of all heavenly odors shedding blinding brilliance overspreading boundless beautiful all spaces with his all regarding faces so he showed if there should rise suddenly within the skies 
sunburst of a thousand suns flooding earth with beams undeemed of then might be that holy one's majesty and radiance dreamed of so did pandu's son behold all this universe enfold all its huge diversity into one vast shape and be visible and viewed and blended in one body subtle splendid nameless the all-comprehending god of gods the never-ending deity but sore amazed thrilled overfilled dazzled and dazed arjuna knelt and bowed his head and clasped his palms and cried and said arjuna said ya i have seen i see lord all is wrapped in thee the gods are in thy glorious frame the creatures of earth and heaven and hell in thy divine form dwell and in thy countenance shine all the features of brahma sitting lone upon his lotus throne of saints and sages and the serpent races ananta vasuki ya mightiest lord i see thy thousand thousand arms and breasts and faces and eyes on every side perfect diversified and nowhere end of thee nowhere beginning nowhere a center shifts wherever soul's gaze lifts thy central self all wielding and all winning infinite king i see the anadim on thee the club the shell the discus see thee burning in beams insufferable lighting earth heaven and hell with brilliance blazing glowing flashing turning darkness to dazzling day look i whichever way ah lord i worship thee the undivided the uttermost of thought the treasure palace wrought to hold the wealth of the worlds the shield provided to shelter virtue's laws the fount whence life's stream draws all waters of all rivers of all being the one unborn unending unchanging and unblending with might and majesty past thought past seeing silver of moon and gold of sun are glorious rolled from thy great eyes thy visage beaming tender throughout the stars and skies doth to warm life surprise thy universe the worlds are filled with wonder of thy perfections space star sprinkled and void place from pole to pole of the blue from bound to bound hath thee in every spot thee thee where thou art not o holy marvellous form is nowhere found o mystic awful one at sight of thee made known the three worlds quake the lower gods draw nigh thee they fold their palms and bow body and breast and brow and whispering worship lord and magnify thee rishis and siddhas cry hail highest majesty from sage and singer breaks the hymn of glory in dulcet harmony sounding the praise of thee 
while countless companies take up the story rudras who ride the storms the adityas shining forms vasus and sadhyas viswas ushmapas maruts and those great twins the heavenly fair ashwins gandharvas rakshasas siddhas and asuras these see thee and revere in sudden stricken fear ya the worlds seeing thee with forms stupendous with faces manifold with eyes which all behold unnumbered eyes vast arms members tremendous flanks lit with sun and star feet planted near and far touches of terror mouths wrathful and tender the three wide worlds before thee adore as i adore thee quake as i quake to witness so much splendor i mark thee strike the skies with front in wondrous wise huge rainbow painted glittering and thy mouth opened and orbs which see all things whatever be in all thy worlds east west and north and south o eyes of god o head my strength of soul is fled gone is heart's force rebuked in mind's desire when i behold thee so with awful brows aglow with burning glance and lips lighted by fire fears as those flames which shall consume at close of all earth heaven are me i see no earth and heaven thee lord of lords i see thee only only thee now let thy mercy unto me be given thou refuge of the world lo to the cavern hurled of thy wide opened throat and lips white touched i see our noblest ones great dhritarashtra's sons bhishma drona and karna caught and crushed the kings and chiefs drawn in that gaping gorge within the best of both these armies torn and riven between thy jaws they lie mangled full bloodily ground into dust and death like streams down driven with helpless haste which go in headlong furious flow straight to the gulfing deeps of the unfilled ocean so to that flaming cave those heroes great and brave pour in unending streams with helpless motion like moths which in the night flutter towards the light drawn to their fiery doom flying and dying so to their death still throng blind dazzled borne along ceaselessly all those multitudes wild flying thou that hast fashioned men devourest them again one with another great and small alike the creatures whom thou makest with flaming jaws thou takest lapping them up lord god thy terrors strike from end to end of earth filling life full from birth to death with deadly burning lurid dread ah vishnu make me know why is thy visage so who art thou feasting thus upon thy dead who awful deity i bow myself to thee namastu te devavara prasid o mightiest lord rehearse why hast thou face so fierce whence doth this aspect horrible proceed krishna said thou seest me as time who kills 
Time who brings all to doom, The slayer Time, ancient of days, Come hither to consume, Excepting thee, of all these hosts Of hostile chiefs arrayed, There stands not one shall leave alive The battlefield. Dismayed no longer be, arise, Obtain renown, destroy thy foes, Fight for the kingdom waiting thee When thou hast vanquished those. By me they fall, not thee. The stroke of death is dealt them now, Even as they show thus gallantly. My instrument art thou. Strike, strong-armed prince, at Drona, At Bhishma's strike, deal death on Karna, Jayadratha, stay all their warlike breath. It's I who bid them perish. Thou wilt but slay the slain. Fight. They must fall, and thou must live, victor upon this plain. Sanjaya said, Hearing mighty Keshav's word, tremblingly that helmed lord clasped his lifted palms and praying grace of krishna stood there saying with bowed brow and accents broken these words timorously spoken arjuna said worthily lord of might the whole world hath delight in thy surpassing power obeying thee the rakshasas in dread at sight of thee are sped to all four quarters and the company of Siddha sound thy name. How should they not proclaim thy majesty's divinest, mightiest? Thou Brahm, than Brahma greater, thou infinite creator, thou god of gods, life's dwelling place and rest, thou of all souls the soul, the comprehending whole, of being formed and formless being the framer o utmost one o lord older than eld who stored the worlds with wealth of life o treasure claimer who wottest all and art wisdom thyself o part in all and all for all from thee have risen numberless now i see the aspects are of thee vayu thou art and he who keeps the prison of narak yama dark and agni's shining spark varuna's waves are thy waves moon and starlight are thine prajapati art thou and it's to thee they knelt in worshipping the old world's far light the first of mortal men again thou god again a thousand thousand times be magnified honour and worship be glory and praise to thee namo namaste cried on every side cried here above below uttered when thou dost go uttered where thou dost come namo we call namostu god adored Namostu, nameless Lord, hail to thee, praise to thee, thou one in all, for thou art all, yea, thou. Ah, if in anger now thou shouldst remember, I did think thee, friend, speaking with easy speech, as men use each to each, did call thee Krishna, Prince nor comprehend thy hidden majesty the might the awe of thee did in my heedlessness or in my love on journey or in jest or when we lay at rest sitting at council straying in the grove alone or in the throng do thee most holy wrong be thy grace granted for that witless sin for thou art now i know father of all below of all above 
of all the worlds within guru of gurus more to reverence and adore than all which is adorable and high how in the wide world's three should any equal be should any other share thy majesty therefore with body bent and reverent intent i praise and serve and seek thee asking grace as father to a son as friend to friend as one who loveth to his lover turn thy face in gentleness on me good is it i did see this unknown marvel of thy form but fear mingles with joy retake dear lord for pity's sake thine earthly shape which earthly eyes may bear be merciful and show the visage that i know let me regard thee as of yore arrayed with disk and forehead gem with mace and anadem thou that sustainest all things undismayed let me once more behold the form i loved of old thou of the thousand arms and countless eyes this frightened heart is fain to see restored again my charitya in krishna's kind disguise krishna said ya thou hast seen arjuna because i loved thee well the secret countenance of me revealed by mystic spell shining and wonderful and vast majestic manifold which none save thou in all the years had favour to behold for not by vedas cometh this nor sacrifice nor arms nor works well done nor penance long nor prayers nor chaunted psalms that mortal eyes should bear to view the immortal soul unclad prince of the kurus this was kept for thee alone be glad let no more trouble shake thy heart because thine eyes have seen my terror with my glory as i before have been so will i be again for thee with lightened heart behold once more i am thy krishna the form thou knowest of old sanjaya said these words to arjuna spake vasudev and straight did take back again the semblance dear of the well-loved charioteer peace and joy it did restore when the prince beheld once more mighty brahma's form and face clothed in krishna's gentle grace arjuna said now that i see come back janardana this friendly human frame my mind can think calm thoughts once more my heart beats still again krishna said ya yeah, it was wonderful and terrible to view me as thou didst dear prince the gods dread and desire continually to view yet not by vedas nor from sacrifice nor penance nor gift giving nor with prayer shall any so behold as thou hast seen only by fullest service perfect faith and uttermost surrender am i known and seen and entered into indian prince who doeth all for me who findeth me in all adoreth always loveth all which i have made and me for love's sole end that man arjuna unto me doth wend here endeth chapter 11 of the bhagavad gita entitled vishvarupa darshanam or the book of manifesting of the one and manifold end of chapter 11 recording by jyoti taravnat